Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. We're holding our monthly tech meet at my shop, and we're going to be talking about a Silver Cloud 3 engine and a crack block. We cleaned the pistons. This was a Continental car, like I said. It has a lower compression piston. The, 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 the other ones, like um, the later Cloud 3s, I think, had a flat top. A little bit higher compression. These are eight. I think those are nine to one. Can you clean these? What's that? Uh, that's a shadow, I think, with the notches. Oh, yeah. Well, same thing, though. Yeah, it's a flat top, but that's that has notches. That's a shadow. And just so you... This is a cylinder head. And it's a really strange combustion chamber. The way they do that. Hmm. Where's the spark plug go? The spark plug on the Silver Cloud is fun. You gotta pull the front wheels and the side panels out. The spark plug comes in way down under the oh. exhaust. Yeah, they were thinking. <laughs> well, ease of maintenance has never been a trait of British cars, right? Right, and, and who designs these? No engineers. Yeah. <laughs> no offense, I know there's engineers here. I just, I just like to have fun with them. Uh-huh. That's a big well, yeah. What's the compression ratio? I think it's eight to one on this one. With this dip, I think the flat tops are nine to one. Yeah. Um, Why did they want lower compression? It depends on gas. Gasoline usually, yeah, the quality, the right. Uh, and you got to remember, this is this was 1963, I think, or four, and. <coughs> Fuel management and ignition were not what they are now. So there's a lot of nasty stuff going on. You can see the amount of carbon built up in there. But the nice thing is, is you can see a little, when, when, um, when you pull an engine apart, let's say you pull one, you got one with carbon on it. You got, Dave, can you get one of those over there that has a carbon on it, on top of the piston? When you take an engine apart, when you pull the heads, and you look in it, you want to see a nice, even accumulation of carbon on top. Black or whatever color it is, a lot of the, the clean running engines are tan. Uh, if you see like clean spots, especially around the outside edges, all the way around, it means the rings are not doing their job. It's pumping oil. So it'll clean them up. I've pulled engines, in fact, that Cloud 3 that came from Missouri that we did, we pulled it out and they were perfectly clean, like brand new in there. So there were issues with that, but that had the Chevy pistons in it and all that. Um, and it, when you see the clean spots, especially around the valves, and the intake valve is the most notorious because the intake valve has a valve seal on it from the oil up here, and if it, the valve seal or the valve guide wear, then it's going to suck oil, and what happens is the oil cleans the carbon. So this one was sucking some oil on this cylinder. I've already had this in a washer. This, this right here is probably from the washing machine, but it could have been moving some oil. But, but these have already been cleaned, so we can't be, we can't condemn them. Um, any questions? Yep. Well, just a comment. I, I think I thought of the clouds. I, I thought that one of my clouds at least had a little thing inside there that said use like 105 octane fuel. Mm -hmm. In the old days, yes. Yeah, yeah it's on the tag for the... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Good yes. luck finding that. Try to find that now. <laughs> <laughs> How about the lead versus other yeah. uh, the, the, the reason for the lead is, is uh, for wear. Uh, so, typically on old cars, you don't have to put any additive in the fuel for lead if they have hardened valve seats. It's all about the valves, <coughs> the valve seats. Now these have super expensive, high quality valve seats, valves, it's got sodium filled exhaust valves, everything is super quality on these. The early, well the six cylinder engines, uh, I think the early post wars, the exhaust valves are in the block and the intake valves are in the head. It's called an F head. Now they just cut seats into that cast iron for those. So lead additive is a good idea. Uh, there's a block over there that I, uh, for my, 
one of my cars that I had hardened seats put in by the machine shop, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, so it's not as important in cloud three then. No, it's not important. The lead is not important. Uh, the reason they took the lead out of the gas is because they put catalytic converters on the cars, which lead destroys because they are full of really expensive rare earth metals, and the lead would contaminate them, and the catalytic converters would quit working, and melt down, and do all kinds of fun stuff. So I mean, to get the sleeve to fit, what tool is he using? Is there is it bench grinding to get it to fit to that? And you're talking about the depth? Yeah, I like that. I like that. Let's just stick this up to a grinder and turn it. Yeah. And get a thousandth. Yeah. Oh, no, we use a lathe. We use a lathe. So it's kind of time consuming because we chuck it into the lathe this way, down in here, because there's no rings hitting down here. And then you got to square it. I don't know if anybody's worked on a lathe, but it's hard to get them really square. Once you get it square, then you get it to touching, and then you cut a thousandth off. A thousandth isn't very much. And then you take it off and then fit it and find out, ah, oh, I could take another. I didn't take a full thousandth off of it. So then you got to do, put it back in the lathe, square it again. Uh, and that's why machine shops get so much money is setting stuff up. That's, that's, and I, I just, I finally bought a lathe and a mill because I got tired of sending parts to a machine shop and having them disappear for a couple of months. I got a production shop. I got to make things happen, right? So. <laughs> That's the difficulty. So what would happen if you took too much off and it was deep? Then that's no good. Mm -hmm. But I mean, would it rattle or...? You can't put it in. It has to stick up above that block. If it goes down below yeah. and you put the head gasket on, it's going to let go sometime. Mm -hmm. It's going to start pumping coolant through there. They all got to be right at that same height so that when you torque this head, right. uh, it squeezes that gasket and it holds. Ronnie, why did they scrap this particular block? They didn't. The car got scrapped. Uh -huh. And it was not worth keeping or fixing. Oh, so you took that? This yeah, is yeah. Out of a you car see all those junk scrapped. cars out against the fence there? Those are potential parts cars. Oh, they're not potential. They are parts cars that I bought. All right, so. got it. Right. Yeah, why isn't there a metal reaction when you put the steel against the aluminum? Is what do you think that is? And this <coughs> is? So this car sat for years, and that's, that's bad. This one sat a few years, but this was driven on a re pretty regular basis. Uh, that's all the world, I mean, it's just like our bodies. This is us when we sit on the couch and eat potato chips all day long. And this one would be where we go and exercise once a month at least, right? I think once a month is a good exercise. How are you doing? Ronnie, does the, does the coolant that you use make a difference? I mean, would some cause more corrosion than others? I think that just to have coolant in it, first of all, to reduce corrosion and to move it around every once in a while is the most important thing. Yeah. Uh, there are all kinds of, there's, uh, there's Evans, I've been told, this is the non-water, the waterless coolant, is, is incredible. And I'm sure it is, but it's extremely expensive and uh, you can't mix water with it. Um, so would you recommend going to Evans if you're gonna replace all the hoses and flush it out? Yeah, you can, but you gotta dry the block out. Dry that all out. You, first of all, you gotta flush it a bunch of times. And then he said he rigged up a hair dryer without the thermostat in it. I think he put it into the lower hose so it would, and he left it for a few days. Yeah. So it was blowing through and totally evaporates everything in there because you don't want any water with that Evans. And from what I understand, the Evans is about $35 a gallon. Yeah, but it's a lifetime. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's what they're at. Never have to do it again, right? <laughs> no, they say it went about eight to 10 years or something like that. Uh, all right, that's just basically electrolysis. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's just basically electrolysis. That's all it is. Um, I uh, run Yes, and I've done that too on a lot of pre-war cars. You use uh, water-soluble oil. What that is is it's it's an oil you mix with water, so and it doesn't stay separated, and you use it to cool machine cutting. That's what it's for. Uh, that has a pump on it. I don't use it, but it just it it keeps the, the metal cool enough so it doesn't get too hot when you're cutting it. And you can put it in cooling systems. I've done that a lot. People freak out when they 
Somebody looks at it, oh man, your head gasket's out because the coolant's white. No, that's water soluble. It's a good trick. <laughs>